Welcome to Russian Submarine Project 06363, Improved Kilo 2. On August 20th, 2010, Chief Designer Igor Malkinov pro announced Project 06363 at the Admiralty Shipyards in St. Petersburg, Russia, during a keel laying ceremony. He's quoted as describing this project as a large diesel electric torpedo missile submarine named Bravo 261 Novoroskis. And that's the mortgage plate down there that they used at the keel laying ceremony. Project 06363 uh, later on became known as, and it's not known at this time, but became known as, as the Black Sea Flotilla. In 2010, uh, NATO acquired a couple technical drawings of the Project 87 improved Kilo, and we're, we're trying to figure out what's different about Project 06363 than Project 87 improved Kilo, because they appear the same. But if you look at the bottom of this Project 877 drawing, you can see there's a drawing referring to a Project 636. And so we were looking closely at this drawing, wondering if this was the submarine that they are building. Also, I want to uh, point out the middle drawing there that they do have concept drawings for a bottom anchoring kilo style submarine that can cut undersea communications cables. All right, these drawings are from 2010 and are very old at this point, but at the time, it was uh, good for us to know that. All right, so NATO said, figured out we got to call it something. We're going to call this the Improved Kilo 2 for now. And construction began in St. Petersburg, Russia. These are photos from inside the workshops where parts of the submarine were delivered. They were delivered pretty quickly because it's a very similar design, uh, hull design as the Kilo, Improved Kilo Project 877. So they had a lot of the stuff already in place. Uh, February 4th, 2011, work continues on Bravo 261. To this point, there's no obvious departure from Project 877. You know, we're just we're getting these photos from inside inside the workshops as they build the submarine, and uh, there's nothing really standing out to us making this one unique yet. September 5th, 2011, a little bit later on in the year, Russian Ministry visits the shipyard and announces that the shipyard, Admiralty Shipyards, will build six submarines for this project. And they'll be going all down to the Black Sea. So that's big news right there. Black Sea fleet is being reinforced. So July 12th or July 2012, uh, hydraulic testing begins in workshops 12 and workshop 9, uh, where they're building multiple hulls at the same time. And you see different segments there. You have a bow se segment, a stern segment. And there's even a middle segment that as the, each segment gets finished, they conduct these hydraulic tests to make sure that the craftsmanship and materials are up to spec. November 2013, the Novorosk is launched. And there's a picture of it getting ready to be wheeled out onto the floating dry dock there on the left. On the right, you see a great picture of the uh, screw blade there. As it comes out, it is a skewed seven blade, as expected. On the left, it's rolling across the railroad style bridge onto the floating dry dock from the shipyard. And on the right, it is completely on the dry dock there. Then from the shipyard, it is tugboated towards the pier where it will eventually be moored. The dry dock is slowly flooded and the submarine is then floated inside the floating dry dock. There's a photo of the dry dock that is now submerged with the floating submarine inside the floating dry dock. And then she is simply tugged over to her pier side uh, where she begins testing in December 2013. April 2014, early in the next year, she begins uh, degaussing and more pier side testing. Pier side testing will continue for almost a full year before she's able to go out to sea and uh, complete her at sea certifications. But we know whenever she gets to the degaussing phase, she's starting to get close. August 22nd, 2014, they have a big ceremony. She's officially joined into the Navy and flies the Russian Navy flag for the first time on August 22nd. November 4th, 2015, she is transferred to Sevron Northern Fleet. That's the uh, nor Northern Fleet out of uh, Severinsk, up there around Murmansk. Uh, so she goes up there where she begins her weapons loadout and preparations for sea trials. Now she has six 53 centimeter torpedo tubes. Uh, the weapons load 
Uh, is it just in preparation for Etsy testing? She'll be shooting all of her different weapons, which include sea mines, torpedoes, uh, land attack missiles. She can hold up to 18 of the torpedoes and land attack missiles. And because the sea mines are a little bit smaller, she can hold up to 24 of those. Now, she can't load all those at the same time, but she can load any combination of those up to those numbers. Something I want to point out, the Russians have a very clever way of loading their torpedoes instead of ripping the top side apart and the inside of the boat to get the torpedoes down into the torpedo room like American submarines. They simply open up two of the six torpedo tubes. Two of them are above the waterline and they can load them in from the bow, backhauling them essentially into the torpedo room where they are then indexed into the other torpedo stows or the other torpedo tubes for a total of 18 total stows for full-size weapons. Very clever design. All right, so what makes her different? We began to see uh, her differences whenever she did these final preps for sea testing. Uh, some of the equipment that they installed on the inside was the, the Llama EKM, which is the CIC, the, the command and control fire control system. It is the most advanced system Aurora has put out at that time. It can, can, it can uh, track multiple contacts. It can develop solutions for six contacts, and it can shoot two of those six contacts with wire-guided weapons. So that's a, that's a big step forward from previous CIC systems. She also has the Palladium remote ship control system, so she can drive the ship and control the weapons all right from the same uh, station. The radar uh, is Brick Group and Snoop Tray 2. Nothing new there. We've had those on uh, the Kilo and Improved Kilo before. Total Ray Antenna is the HFCB bands. Nothing really new there, but the periscopes are new. They now have the infrared. They have the television sensor, so they can record their periscopes a lot easier than putting a camera up to it like the old days. And a laser rangefinder uh, was detected on the periscope. The Rubicon M sonar system is the new version of the Rubicon, so that is technically new for the uh, for the improved Kilo 2. The sonar suite incorporates underwater comms into the active passive sonar suite. It's all one bundle now. Uh, it also does coded communications, which sounds like you know musical tones, five to ten seconds of tones, and then you look up the tones in a code book and you're like, okay, I need to go do this X Y Z. That's what that sounds like. And she also has sea mine detection, so she can detect those bottom moored mines you know, greater than 15,000 yards away. We really don't know exactly the range of the sea mine detection. It probably has a lot to do with conditions and the type of mine that they're looking for. Uh, the sonar elements is 1,008 sonar elements. So this is a large sonar array. It's seven and a half feet in diameter. And when she transmits active, uh, she transmits or beam forms 540 beams over a 360 degree azimuth. So it's a... Uh, there's a lot of overlap there, which means it's a higher fidelity active sonar. All right. Finally, in June 2015, she does get away from the pier for a little while. We have her assets on station in the Barents Sea and the Norwegian Sea just waiting for her. And here is what we observe. This slide is why you subscribe to this channel. We observed her doing 17 knots on the surface. 25 knots submerged. She did a deep dive down to 300 meters. She may be able to go deeper, but that's what we saw. And we recorded her at 117 decibels at one yard. How we got that measurement is none of your damn business. All right. And then the whole world was kind of shocked, but not really. When on December 8th of the same year, 2015, the first use of caliber land attack missiles emerged from the Mediterranean Sea and went into Syria and destroyed two targets uh, with a total of four missiles. The hull number two, not hull number one, hull number two, Bravo 237 was credited with launching the attack. And uh, since then, the Black Sea Fleet, as of this recording, has received all six of its improved Kilo 2s and the Pacific Fleet is going to get six of them as well. So there'll be six in the Black Sea, and there's going to be six more over on the Pacific side of things, and we'll see if they make any more of these. But this is the Russian, Russia's most capable version of the Improved Kilo 2. There's lots of different versions, a lot of which are exported to other countries like Algeria, China, Vietnam, India, uh, that get uh, similarly capable uh, kilos, but this project 06363 is for Russia right now, and they're filling out their fleet with these kilos. 